In this video, you're going to learn about Virtual Surveyor 6.2. Step by step. Right after this. Step 1. Clipping. You can now clip image and elevation terrains. Draw or import a boundary around your area of interest. Select the ortho photo, DSM and the boundary. Go to the Terrain Tools tab and click Clip. You'll see that image and elevation data outside the boundary is cut off completely. Step 2. Mosaics. The clipping tool also completes the mosaic toolset. You could already set the order for your terrains using Move Down or Move Up. Now you can create cut lines between adjacent chunks of data. Here, I have created a clip boundary nicely along this group of trees. I use it to clip the first terrain. In this way, I can combine as many chunks as I want. The final work can be exported to one single image or elevation file. Step 3. Renumbering. I have here an imported set of reference surfaces, and I want to control the number for each pile. I select the surface and set the next number to 1. Then I click Apply and the number is added. I can do this for all piles in one operation. I select All Piles, and I apply the numbers. I can update the descriptor in the same way. I add Pile and Apply. Then I can annotate all piles through the drawing tools. Step 4. Export Volumes. When you export volumes to a shapefile, also the volume calculation is included. You can also choose now how to present the surface. You can show it as a tin, as in this case, or as outlines. In order to change it, select the surfaces. Go to the surface styling and hide the tin. The outlines appear. And then you simply export the survey again to a shapefile. Now you get the piles as outlines, and you still have. The volumes included. Step 5. Select Within. This feature is useful when you need to remove a part of a point grid. I've drawn a boundary around the water body, and I've also generated cue points over this quarry. I select the water body, go to the Drawing Tools, select Within, and when I press Delete, the cue points that are over the water body are gone. Then I select my work area and I can finish my triangulation. Step 6. Contours. Working with contours changed. Instead of generating contours, you now choose how to present your surface. As triangles or as contour lines. I select the surface. I go to the surface styling. I click Contours and then Show Contours. You can also set the interval in the same way. Or you can hide the triangles. When you export the surface now, they'll be exported as contour lines. Step 7. Hulls. I have these section lines here along this motorway. And when I triangulate all, I will have a lot of sharp triangles that I don't want. Undo. Now I select all section lines. And I create a hull. I set the type to concave. And I click Hull Selection. This generates a boundary nicely around the section lines of my motorway. I select that boundary and I triangulate within. And when I zoom in, 
I will have a clean triangulation around my motorway. Step 8. Extract points. This feature is useful when you want to annotate the vertices of polylines. Select the polylines, go to the Drawing Tools tab, and click Extract Points. The points appear in the active layer. Select this layer, go to the Drawing Tools, and check the Elevation Annotation box. The elevations appear as labels. Also, these annotations are maintained now when you export to a .dxf file. Step 9. Fly-throughs. You can create virtual flights very easily. Create a position for every location where your flight must pass through. I add one more here by clicking Create in the Navigation tab. Then I select the Start position, and when I click Fly Through, my flight will go through all locations that have the same descriptor. In this case, Waypoint 1 is ignored. Did you find Virtual Surveyor 6.2 interesting? If so, make sure to subscribe to the Virtual Surveyor YouTube channel. Click on the subscribe button in the center or explore features in detail in the next video.